Welcome, Mala. Welcome to New York City. How you doing? A brother from another mother. It's always good to see you. How I feel like I listen, how music kind of just overtakes me, overwhelms me. Mm. It was jungle music that did that for me first. When I heard that, it was just something from a totally another planet, but I felt so connected to it at the same time. Kind of like talking like 92, 93, so it's kind of like the hardcore jungle time. So, you know, obviously people like Groove Rider and Fabio. What I loved about jungle is that it opened my mind to all music because it wasn't just a reggae sample in a jungle track. You had that hip-hop samples, or you'd have hip-hop breaks, or you'd have, you know, if you listen to the stuff that someone like uh, Fotec was doing, he was, he, was, he was using mad different, like, samples over his drum breaks and stuff, you know, from classical tracks or jazz tracks or whatever, you know, so it opened my mind to listen to a lot of different mm. music, not just, not just, like, roots or reggae. Talk about DMZ first. That was your party? Yeah, with Lofa and yeah. Koki and Pokes. And Sergeant Pokes. And how long have you and Lofa and Pokes known each other? I've known Lofa since I was about 16. Maybe a bit before, 14, 15. But Koki and Pokes, we know each other since school, early school, so like 10, 10 years old, 11 years old. Oh, that's great. Yeah, a couple yeah. of decades now. Yeah, yeah. When did you start the, the party? DMZ, yeah. it was in 2004. Oh, okay. Because there wasn't really anything happening in London at that time with this type of music that we were doing. You had Forward, which was happening. And like, Forward was the place, you know what I mean? We just wanted to take something in our direction because we were making so much music. And between the three of us, we had kind of a different sound. And uh, we just wanted to take it our way. We was, we was young as well, you know what I mean? It, when we started it, it was, you know, like 24 or whatever then. And it's kind of like, have a, have a different kind of approach to things and had much more like a different fire. Mm -hmm. Where it was really about doing everything ourselves. Didn't want to do nothing with no one. It was just like this is our thing. This is what we're about, and this is how we're going to do it. And you know, it was one of those things. Either people can jump on it, or people won't jump on it. You know, yeah. it wasn't really doing it for people. It was really us doing stuff for ourselves. You know, it's just, that's what we was feeling. That's what we enjoyed. DMZ was always a non-exclusive session. There was mm. no prejudice, no discrimination, never no fancy VIP area and all that nonsense. People used to come behind the turntables and be looking in your dubs while you're, while you're picking them out of your bag. But it was that kind of like harmony and unity amongst people that, that people enjoyed, I think, in that mm. space, you know, because Clubland gets a bit funny, you know what I mean? You have a little rope that says, because you're not X, Y, Z, you can't go over that line. It's, already creating segregation and there's so much segregation in the world already don't want that when you go into a dance and that's why still now I, I think it's important that you know we do, we still do the DMZ sessions and uh, we did our last one in Amsterdam oh, cool. for our seventh birthday we had Code 9 come down and play Scream come and play James Blake Joker and still now I think it's very important with all the traveling that's going on that every now and then everyone tries to get back together into one spot and and, and connect on that level again you know how you doing then you're all right yeah I remember when Francois first asked me to come and play at Deep Space and I was like, well, you know, what am I going to do there? And, you know, he totally, he totally got the vibe yeah. and took the risk to, to present something new to his audience, you know? Yeah, he's very open-minded. Yeah, so, I mean, amazing. I looked around the dance floor, it's all I had to do. And I saw, like, two, you know, a businessman, yeah. 
grooving people of all races had come to That was into probably New the York first City. one I played at. Yeah. Community is, is yeah. a fundamental part of a harmonic existence, you know what I mean? If there isn't that, everything will break down. Miracles, 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 miracles. Well, I know you did some teaching back in England with. Yeah, with did you for us? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So what was that about? And what well, areas I used to work it? for a, a company called CYDT, which is like the Croydon Youth Development Trust. I used to work with youngsters from you know the age of about uh, 11, 12, 13, going right up into 18, 19. Yeah. And they would come down to similar environment like this, you know, just workshops and, and you know you got your reason and and logic and all the rest of it. The youngsters were uh, kids that were going through certain certain struggles, certain hardships, so from, you know, kind of broken homes, kids that were having problems in mainstream schools and being kicked out of mainstream schools, kids that were having running with the, with the police and all of that. But it was a place for them to come and channel their energy, you know, and we just used to try and transfer that madness into something that helped heal them, you know. Yeah. I never really plan a set as such. I always like to know what I'm going to start with before I go into it. Over a period of time, there'll be certain mixes that you do that you feel really work, or you get to a certain point in your set where it goes to a certain place, and that's it's kind of it just kind of maps out in real time. There's nothing that I, I don't sit at home and write stuff down. I don't practice mixing at home or anything like that. I don't really have turntables set up at home, but I know my dubs inside out, you know. So. I just kind of just go with, with how it feels, you know, and inevitably, you know, you do some mixes the same because they just, you just feel like those mixes work. I really look up at the crowd when I play as well, actually. Mm -hmm. I've noticed sometimes uh, my head is always down, you know, so it's not that I feel like I'm not playing for people, but whole, this whole kind of music thing for me is a very personal journey. Mm -hmm. And it's a blessing that you're able to meet people along the way and share it with people. But this is something that I have to do my way. Yeah. Because I remember when I first did a set, I planned it and I think I must have got like one of the, I pulled out a record wrong or something. So, and I looked at my list and I was like, oh, where am I at now? And it totally threw me. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, I'm never doing that again, you know? I'm never yeah. doing, I'm just gonna go for it. And, and Yeah, then, I agree. It's always a disaster when yeah, you plan things too I'm, I'm not. Pl I'm not a planning guy, trust me. Yeah, yeah. I'm not, a, I'm not the guy that plans, you know? Yeah. Well, yeah, this interview <laughs> was pretty much <laughs> <laughs> spontaneous. So, so yeah. <laughs> It's uh, just go, just go with it. It just, I, I like it that way. Yeah. The sound quality, it's in, it's important not just for my particular music, but for everyone's music. Mm. You know, an artist or a producer or you know a, a writer or a painter, you know they don't put their life and soul into something for it to be reproduced at a, a really bad quality. It doesn't really make sense, it kind of defeats the object, mm. the time spent. So for me and for the music that I do, I think still to this day that playing my music on a sound system using dub plates or vinyl is the, is the best way to hear my music. I'm not designing music for radio play. Yeah. Or for your laptop or for your iPods even. Yeah. Sound system music that I'm dealing with. We can have this debate all day long, it comes up all the time nowadays, MP3s and laptops and this yeah. and that. But ultimately it's personal preference. A lot of the people that go out to clubs and listen to music maybe they, they can't define the difference. And a lot of club sound systems and PA systems nowadays, they actually sound better for the digital format. Yeah, they're, they're getting tweaked for that. But ultimately, you have to look beyond the format. And if the message still translates, then the message translates. And that's what's most important about music. And that's something that I think getting into this discussion about MP3 and digital and download and dubplate, you can kind of forget that. At the, at the root of the music, if the message is still being translated and still can be felt, then it's all good, you know? Yeah. We don't wanna work tonight. And we don't wanna fight. Are you 
gonna start changing tempo, start altering. I write, I write like a movements. lot of different stuff. When I play music to people, and the message that is within, this is the frequency that needs to be heard. So, you know, don't get me wrong, I love all musics. But when I play sound, this is the sound that I play. Yeah, and it's sound system music. Yeah. yeah. I agree. All right, Mala, thanks, thanks for coming through. Well. I'll see you soon. You're welcome, man. Thank next you. Next time you come through. So once again, New York, thank you very much. Thank you. Welcome to DubSpot. We believe in providing you hands-on experience right away. Whether you're completely new to music and want to turn the sounds in your head into a musical reality, or you're an experienced artist looking to refine your skills and add new tools to your arsenal, we're ready to meet you at your level. For students of all ages, all levels, and all styles of music, DubSpot is here to help you achieve your goals. With course offerings both online wherever you are and at our school in the heart of New York City, we are ready to guide you through the next phase of your musical transformation. Whether you want to produce music, DJ, or do both, you've come to the right place. Come explore DubSpot for yourself. Become a part of our community and make music.